sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I like that. 21 out of 52. Oh, that's good, darling. Good, that's great. Come on, let me see how many you can get in the hat. Oh, honey, not right now. Louise is sick today, and I've got a million things to do. Well, look, sweetheart, talk to me. I'm lonesome. <laughs> <laughs> when you're not working, you're worse than a restless child. There must be something you can do. Yeah, come here, come here. I got an idea. Mm -hmm. Sit down. I want you to hear the song I'm going to put in the new show. Sit right there. Don't go anywhere. Right? Listen, it's a beautiful song, lovely ballad. Listen to this. You can tell when you open the door. You can tell if there's love in a home. Every table and chair seems to smile. Do come in, come and stay for a while. You almost be. You've been there once before by the shine. And the glow of the room And the clock seems to chime Come again any time You'll be welcome wherever you roam You can tell when there's love never even heard the song. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I told you it was a new song. I want to put it in a show. Now, sit down. I want to play but it for honey, you. But, honey, I've got too much work to do today. I tell you, why don't you go down to the club and help them get ready for the opening? There's nothing doing. They're running production numbers today. I got nothing oh, to do there. I know, honey, but there's must be something you can find oh, to do. Now, you run along. There's nobody at the club but a bunch of chorus girls. Oh, well, go down anyway, honey. I've got to get you out from under my feet. Chorus girl! <laughs> Daddy, you come right back here. What's the matter? Don't you dare leave this house. <laughs> do you have to do everything I tell you to do? <laughs> really, darling, what you need is a hobby to keep you out of trouble. I've got a hobby. Come here. It's a very nice hobby, but I've just got a lot of work to do. Now, please, honey, go, go on and uh, sing your song again for me. I can hear it in the kitchen, so you sing nice and loud for Mom. That's a good <laughs> took a couple of days off, so I thought I'd stick my head in and say hello. Well, it's sure great to see you. Uh, oh, boy, are you putting on the lard? <laughs> Posture with me. Posture, huh? You're no string bean yourself there, Tubby. Oh. Come on in. <laughs> Honey, it's your father. Hi, Dad. Hi, yes, sweetheart. Oh, well, this is a surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How long are you going to be here? Oh, I figured I'd stay in town a week or so. It it all depends on whether I can get a reservation at a hotel for that long. A hotel? Yeah. What are you talking about? Don't be silly. You're staying with us. Oh, no. I wouldn't think of putting you out. Oh, no. you're not putting us out? As a matter of fact, you've arrived just in the nick of time. Now Danny has a playmate. Yeah. No, no, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to put you to any trouble. It's no trouble. Now, you'll stay with us, and that's final. Now, Danny. I insist now. I'll go down to the car and get your luggage. Now, Danny, you don't have Please to do don't that. don't argue with me. I want to do it. Oh, well, look, you can go down to the car if you want to, but uh, be careful you don't trip over my bags. They're right outside the door. <laughs> You big phony. Yes, you knew we'd make you stay with you us. You are the world's greatest con artist. Mm. You know that. I'd better get my bags before you change your mind. <laughs> yeah. I'll get them. 
I'll get him. Oh, hello, baby. Look who's here. Grandma, Grandma. Oh, how are you, sweet? Mm -hmm. Oh, my, that's the sweetest kiss I ever got. It's strawberry. <laughs> How's my girl? I'm not your girl anymore. You're not? No, I'm Tommy's girl. Here, hold my lollipop, I'll show you. See, he gave me a space commander's butt. <laughs> well, now, just a minute. Who's this Tommy? Oh, Tommy Edwards, a little boy in her kindergarten class. Oh. So I've lost you as my girl, huh? Yeah, and he said we're going steady. <laughs> You're going steady? Yeah, isn't that wonderful, Grandpa? It sure is. What's going steady? <laughs> Don't you know? No, Tommy doesn't know either. But we're going to ask his sister so we know what we're going. <laughs> I know where you're going right now. You're going straight upstairs and get cleaned up. <laughs> oh, hi, Gramps. Where's Daddy? I've got to see him right away. Hey, wait a minute. Come here. I haven't seen you for a month, and it's all I get is, Hiya, Gramps. Where's Daddy? I'm sorry, Gramps. Well, no, that's better. It's just that I'm in a hurry. I've got to see Daddy right away. He's got to help me. Now, hold your horses. Why does it have to be your Daddy? There's nothing in the book that says your grandfather can't help you. Okay, who can help me? Now, what is it you need? Fifteen dollars. <laughs> hey, Danny! Come on, here. Come on and get him here, will you? Dad? Hey, why don't you? What is it? I need fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars for what? Well, a bunch of us kids at school want to enter the soapbox derby, and I need the fifteen dollars to buy the wheels and parts. And if you'll tell me where your wallet is, I'll be glad to get it for whoa, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. Hold it a second here. You need more than wheels and parts for a soapbox race. You gotta have tools and a place to build the thing. Mr. Johnson said I could use a corner of the basement and all the tools, too. Well. Gee, thanks, Daddy. Where's your wallet? Whoa, whoa. I didn't say yes. All I said was, well. Uh, let him do it, Danny. It's things like this that build the boy's character, teaches them how to do things for themselves. Mm, spoken like a true grandfather. All right, here. <laughs> hey, here's $15. Gee, thanks, Daddy. Let's get one thing straight now. You're building this yourself. Don't be coming up here every five minutes and Dad helping with this or Dad helping with that. This is your project. You do it alone, right? I'll build it all by myself. That's the only way I want to do it. That'll be fine. <laughs> How do you like it? Flips me for 15 bucks in three seconds. Mm -hmm. Want a cigar? No, thanks. <laughs> soapbox derby, huh? Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I used to build those soapbox races. When you were a kid, they hadn't even invented soap yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they invented the box so that when the soap came along, they had a place to put it. <laughs> That's pretty good, huh, Dad? Hmm. Fifteen bucks for wheels and parts, just like that, and I give it to him. Could you imagine us saying, hey, Pop, can I have fifteen dollars for wheels and parts? <laughs> you think our dads would have given it to us? I don't know about your old man, but my old man would have given it to me, and you know where. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have to go to the junkyards and dig around for the parts. Ah, uh, how well I remember. And boy, were those wheels hard to find. Oh, we never had any trouble finding wheels. There are plenty of wheels. You didn't. Where did you find them? Well, all I can tell you is that in our neighborhood, it was very rare to see a baby buggy with more than three wheels. <laughs> <laughs> ah, those were the good old days. Yeah, they sure were. Yeah, we sure had fun building things when we were kids. We did, too. Let's go down and watch Rusty build his racer. Come on. That's a good idea. <clears throat> yeah, but no helping him. I mean, he does the work by himself, just like I said. Sure, you gave him the money for the parts, and now it's up to Rusty to build a racer. That's right. I mean, the most we'll do is maybe supervise a little. Yeah, you know, supervising isn't really like doing the work for him. It's more like being a technical advisor. Yeah, I mean, see that he doesn't break any of the tools or anything. Right. <laughs> uh, he does all the work. I mean, we don't lift a hand. Hand? We don't lift a finger. <laughs> you better put on some old clothes. <laughs> Hi, son. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Grandpa. How's it going? I haven't even gotten started yet. Oh, oh. now, don't get discouraged. We'll have this thing built in no time. Yeah. Who's we? Uh, 
Well, you, you, you and me and Grandpa. Yeah. Of course, you're going to do all the work. We're just going to supervise a little. I mean, like in case you should run into any kind of trouble. Oh. Now, what kind of trouble have you run into? <laughs> Not so far. I'm doing swell. Oh, well, now, you got to be sure to get the wheels on tight so you don't have any drag. You understand? Uh, uh, uh. Now, you leave the wheels to me. I know just how to do that. Oh, OK. I'll, I'll, I'll rig up the chassis. Now, that can wait. We build the body first. No, you, know, you got to build a chassis first, then mount the body on it. It tells you right here in the book what to do. Never mind the book. I know what to do. You build the body first and then put on the wheels. That's the way they do it. Oh, it is, huh? Yeah. Well, then maybe you ought to go to Detroit and help those poor misguided fellas. Because <laughs> they've been building them all wrong, according to you. You see, they build the chassis first, then mount the body on it. Well, I'll build it my way here. And you can go to Detroit and build it their way. <laughs> you better hurry or you'll miss your plane. Now, just a minute, will you? Who's building this thing, you or me? I am. <laughs> oh, sure you are, son. Sure, sure. Uh, we, we, we're just here to supervise. That's right, but I don't want them supervising the building of monstrosity. Oh, yeah? Daddy, well, what makes I you think what you supervise would be any car. better than what I supervise? Be because I'm a younger Daddy, man than you are, and I understand the modern trends. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I mean, today, things are built streamlined. The whole idea is built low to the ground. Low to the ground, huh? Yeah. Well, in that case, your brains are in the right place for the job. <laughs> Look, guys, let's let Rusty decide who should supervise, huh? Uh, Russ? <laughs> hey. Russ, now where did he go? I don't know, just walked out, I guess. How do you like that kid? He always does that. Start something and never finishes. <laughs> That's right. Well, now that we got rid of him, let's get the work. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Come over here and I'll show you the design. You mind how, how I'll draw it. This is the way it should look. You see here? What? You give it this shape. Around here, draw it there, around it, and there's the wheels. Know? What is that? Put a handle on it, you'll have a nice push cart. <laughs> this is a streamlined racer we're building. It's got to be low. The whole idea is to cut down on the wind resistance. Well, most of the wind resistance around here could be cut down if you just shut your mouth. <laughs> There's plenty of breeze coming from your direction, kid. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't got a big plow on my kisser to cut through it like you have. <laughs> It's going no place. Danny here can't make up his mind what he wants for Rusty. I'm a little confused. I thought Rusty was building this racer. Where is he? Ah, uh, he, I don't know, he left. Man, well, forget Rusty. We got work to do. Well, if you ask me, there's one too many mechanics on this job. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Well, I was just thinking the same thing. Why don't you and Kathy go to a movie? Won't you take her to a movie? She's your wife, and she deserves to go to a movie once in a while. What kind of a husband are you? Well, she's your daughter. You don't see her so much, you know. You ought to spend more time with her. Take her to a movie. You call yourself a father? What kind of a crack is that? I love my daughter. I love her, too. Let's flip a coin. The loser <laughs> takes her to a movie. Come on. <laughs> go ahead. What do you want? Heads or tails? Hey, thanks a lot. Don't bother flipping any coins over my company. I wouldn't dream of spoiling your fun. Go on, enjoy yourself. I got plenty to keep me occupied. Take him with you. He'll be good for peeling the potatoes. <laughs> not good for anything else. Look, why don't you go and help your daughter or something? Let me finish this thing, you bullheaded Yankee. I'm staying right here, you Lebanese camel jockey. <laughs> I can't trust you to build it alone. We're building a racer, not a pyramid. Look, we're not going to get any place unless there's just one boss on the job. Now you're talking. There can only be one captain on a ship. Fine, now dip your hands in that bucket of grease and get these lubricated here. What do you mean, dip my hands in a bucket? I'm the boss here. Who said? I've had more experience. I'm older than you are. That's right, you are older. And according to this firm's old age pension plan, you've just been retired. <laughs> we'll mail your gold watch. Goodbye. <laughs> this is the winner. <laughs> Nuts. Come over. I'll show you the winner. Come here. Here, this is the way you build it, see? You taper the end low like that. Swing it just a little higher in the front. Dip it like that. Give it kind of a, a teardrop shape, see? A teardrop shape. Eh? That's right, Daddy O. Build another one like that, and you got a nice pair of earrings. <laughs> this is the one I'm gonna build. 
Okay. You build that one. I'll build that one. We'll let the kid decide which one he wants to race in. Fair enough. Okay. Now, step aside. I got work to do. Huh? First thing I got to do is mount my wheels. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. I paid 15 bucks for those wheels. You want wheels? Go get your own. Right on wheel. Hey. What? Where did they keep the baby buggies in this building? <laughs> It's certainly better looking than that blue plate special of yours. <laughs> That's blue streak special. Call it what you want to call it. It still doesn't look like a racing car. No? Well, it'll look pretty good with Rusty in it when he proudly comes across the finish line. A winner! You honestly believe he's going to pick that monstrosity over this streamliner? Of course. Let's just wait till he gets here and let him decide, huh? Well, believe me, it's going to be a pretty tough decision for the kid to make whether to pick out the one he really likes the best or pick that one because his father made it. <laughs> we just won't say who made which one. I mean, I wouldn't want him to know that you made that one. Anyhow, because I know my son. He'd be a cinch to pick yours on account of he wouldn't want to be cruel to a feeble old man. <laughs> You wouldn't care to do something more than just wave your lip at me, would you? <laughs> Meaning what? Meaning I'm willing to bet you that my blue plate special, uh, blue streak special. <laughs> will run no, you had it right. Blue uh, plate. Our blue streak special will run circles around your jet flyer any day of the week. I will take that bet. Come on. Come on, where? There's a nice steep hill just two blocks from here. Open that door. Get in here. Quiet, I'll do the talking. Yeah, you've been talking all day. Quiet. Are you Mrs. Williams? Yes, I am. Well, these two boys claim they live here. They do, but what's the matter? Well, I caught these two middle-aged delinquents racing scooters down on the street. <laughs> Crossing 2nd Avenue against the light and failing to yield when I blew my whistle. I wanted a yield. I didn't have a yielder. <laughs> I forgot to put brakes on a darn thing. Some mechanic, eh? I told you, they'd right, take it away and build it the way that I told them. Why didn't you build it that right? way? I'll run the two of you in for disturbing the peace. I don't know why I didn't do it in the first place. Now, look, Mrs. Williams, if they give you any more trouble, do me a favor. Send them to a day camp. <laughs> to be ashamed of yourself. Two grown men acting like a couple of schoolboys. What do you mean, schoolboys? We built a couple of professional racers. We had to road test them to see which one was the fastest. <laughs> and we saw. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I didn't get a fast start. Oh, yes, you did. You're supposed to start rolling from a dead stop, but you pushed and then jumped on. I did not push. Yes, you did. The thing was so fast, it started without me. <laughs> yeah. You want a return match, buddy, you can have it any time. Well, now is as good a time as any. Let's Come on. Go. No, stop it just a minute. Do you want to end up in a reform school? <laughs> well, besides, it wouldn't prove anything anyhow. Rusty is going to choose mine, and that's all there is to it. How do you know he won't choose mine? Because I know he won't now, choose yours. Now, wait a minute. If you two had just bothered to read the rule books, you would have seen this paragraph, and it would have settled the whole argument. Now, listen. Rule. The racer must be built solely by the contestant. What? Any assistance immediately disqualifies the entrant. Each boy is honor-bound to follow this rule, unquote. Let me see that. Then Rusty can't use either one of them. Not according to this, he can't. But he must have known the rules. Why didn't he say something? Yeah. If I know you two, he didn't get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> he got a chance, all right. How do you like that kid? Hmm. Well, I'll make sure he doesn't use either one of them. Come on, Pop, let's go downstairs and take them apart. Oh, it seems a pity, Danny, after all the work you put into them. Oh, Danny, before we do this, couldn't we take them out for one more run? <laughs> <laughs> no, Papa. Oh. Wouldn't be any fun now, anyhow. 
Gee, I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe it. Just can't believe that my son would cheat like that. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Rusty didn't cheat. Oh, he didn't, huh? No. I, I didn't want to interfere, well, then Danny, don't, but... will you, honey? Well, I'm not going to have you calling Rusty a cheater. Look, baby, this is a problem between me and my son, and I think I'm man enough to handle it. Well, all right, my lord and master, if that's the way you feel about it, handle it. Well, how else do you want me to feel? I mean, the boy knew the rules, yet he let us do the job for him. Now, if that's not cheating, I don't know what you call her. It's as plain as a nose on my face. And nothing could be plainer than that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a happy day for me when you run out of nose jokes. <laughs> I will when you run out of notes. Oh, come on. Well, I see you found them. Oh, yeah. Did you and Grandpa make these? Yeah, me and Grandpa made them. Me and Grandpa are going to take them apart right now, too. How come? They're real neat. Look, when we built these things, we didn't know about the rules. It was after we finished them that we found out the truth. I must say I'm terribly disappointed, son. Oh, I don't blame you. I'd be disappointed, too. But I could have told you. You could have told me what? That you and Grandpa are too old to race in the soapbox derby. <laughs> you know what we're talking about. You read that rule book, didn't you? Sure. Yeah. Well, at least he's honest enough to admit it. Well, you're going to have to forget all about the soapbox derby for this year, that's all. Why? Look, I don't want any argument with you. Someday you'll thank me for making you do the right thing. I don't even know what I'm doing wrong. Look, you said you read the rules. And if you read them, you must know that they apply to all the boys. You're no exception. You can't race in either one of these racers. I don't want to race in them. I've got my own, the Green Hornet. The what? The Green Hornet. Wait till you see it. The Green Hornet? <laughs> oh. Well, how do you like it? Isn't she a beauty? You built that? Uh-huh. All by yourself? Uh-huh. Over at Eddie Canfield's house. You built that all by yourself? I had to. Those are the rules, you know. Just a minute. Just a minute. Where'd you get the money for the parts? From Kathy. <laughs> Kathy? Yeah. You mean she knew and she, she let us hammer our fingers to bits for nothing? She said that's the best way to keep you out of my hair. <laughs> Mr. Daly, you have a sneaky daughter. Correction, Mr. Williams, you have a sneaky wife. <laughs> One thing is certain, I don't have a sneaky son. <laughs> Gee, I'm, I'm sure glad you built this by yourself. It's real nice, too, real nice. Of course, it may not be as fast as that jet flyer of mine, but you mean my Blue Streak special. <laughs> Who says it's not as fast? Why, I bet this baby here can beat both of those crates. Crates? Yeah. They look flashy, but I bet they're all show and no go. No go, huh? Mm. I think this young man needs to be taught a lesson. I was just thinking the same thing. Hey, Russ, when you came home, did you see a big, tall policeman standing on the corner? Oh, well, there was no policeman there. Open the door. Come on. <laughs> Look, lady, I'm a very busy man. I've got a tough beat. And the captain won't like it if I have to spend all my time chasing Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn here. <laughs> so I'm telling you for the last time, if this happens again, I'm going to throw the both of them in the clink. And don't say I didn't warn you. Well, I, I promise you, officer, I'll see that they're both punished. I'll send them to bed without any supper. <laughs> you should have seen the two of them racing their scooters down the hill, chasing some poor little kid. <laughs> They would have caught him, they'd have killed him. It's a good thing he had a two-block lead on him. Hi. This is a picture of St. Jude Hospital, Memphis, Tennessee. It is supported by an organization known as ALSAC, A-L-S-A-C. And I am proud to be president of that organization. ALSAC means aiding leukemia-stricken American children. The members of my organization and I have pledged ourselves to do everything we possibly can
to help fight this dreaded killer of children, leukemia. Thank you.